What's up, gamers? In this video, we're diving into all the leaks and rumors surrounding the Nintendo Switch Pro. In our first video about the Switch Pro, we covered the basics and went through all the reports confirming the system's launch. You should check it out if you have a second, but this time we're going to get further into the details. Like what the Switch Pro might actually look like, and why Nintendo has been so weirdly silent about it. We also cover how Nintendo's company culture would lead to a Switch Pro, and what the new blood in the company might want to do with the system. This is gonna be a wild year for gaming, with Nintendo set to make some of the biggest moves in its history. Luckily, the gamer is here to let you know exactly what you can expect. Let's do it! All the Switch Pro Upgrades Before we dig into anything else, we should go over what the leaked Switch dock specifically entail. Obviously, everyone has their own theory on what the Switch Pro will be, but we're only sticking to credible rumors in this video. That means we're not taking any info from Reddit or Twitter accounts only spun up two weeks ago and made to spread one specific piece of information. We're also not including supposed patents that go counter to Nintendo's entire business strategy. Sorry, Nintendo Insider 420, we're not buying into your lies this time around. After we cut out the noise, what's left paints a pretty clear picture of what Nintendo wants to do with the Switch Pro. Basically, it's going to be an enhanced Switch in every sense of the word. Not only will the Switch Pro improve on the Switch's best features, but it'll also address the system's biggest issues. First up, the Joy-Cons. Come on, you knew this one was coming. The Joy-Cons have been one of the biggest flaws in the Switch since, well, ever. Ever since Nintendo revealed the name of the controllers, gamers have had mixed feelings towards them. Many complain about Joy-Cons being too itty-bitty and causing hand cramping, or having significant input lag. Then again, these issues don't really matter if you can't get your Joy-Con to work at all. The left Joy-Con has been a frequent source of frustration for gamers. Docked switches not reading inputs from the left controller is still an issue. In fact, this problem has evolved and now phantom inputs or Joy-Con drift are rendering some games completely unplayable. Leaks suggest that the new batch of Joy-Cons will have an extendable lower section, making them more comfortable for users. While Nintendo is changing Joy-Cons up, it'd also be great if they could add an improved D-pad. Sure, there are one or two sets of Joy-Cons with D-pads, but gamers who like old-school controls deserve more color options. A patent also recently leaked for a new version of the Joy-Cons that have a stylus built right into them. This suggests that the Switch Pro, or at least Nintendo's upcoming docket of games, will center on touchscreen functionality. This could include anything from an increased number of Wii U, DS, and 3DS ports to more mobile game ports. At the very least, it's about to get way easier to play Mario Maker 2 undocked. Lastly, the Switch Pro is set to be far more powerful than the base model. Outside of using an enhanced version of the Tegra X1 chip at the core of the base Switch, the Pro will have an enhanced screen. While it will still fall short of the PS5 and Xbox Series X, Switch Pro games should look and play much better, both at home and on the go. With titles like Breath of the Wild 2, Bayonetta 3, and No More Heroes 3 coming out soon, it tracks that Nintendo would want a system that can realize the scope of these games. And speaking of Nintendo, you're probably wondering why the company isn't hyping up their upcoming system at all. Well... Nintendo Switch Pro Silence Nintendo has an odd company culture by the standards of the game industry. Shocking, right? Who would have thought a company with a plumber as their mascot and a paintball FPS game would be weird? Seriously though, Nintendo does march to the beat of its very own drum, which is exactly what's allowed it to be so successful and stopped it from chasing trends that hurt other gaming companies. For instance, none of the games Nintendo developed for the Switch have loot boxes or other super predatory mechanics. There's a flip side to this Super Mario coin though, and this culture is also keeping Nintendo from giving us the info that we crave. Nintendo has been extremely tight-lipped about its business practices and strategies since the company entered the gaming industry. They rarely give consumers much of a heads up for their upcoming titles, and go silent when delays happen. This is why we still only have a JPEG's worth of info about Metroid Prime 4. There's a darker side to this practice, too. Nintendo's the only console manufacturer that doesn't reveal how they acquire the raw materials that go into the system. Since, like a lot of hardware, the Switch is made of semi-rare metals, the components could come from places in the world with poor labor laws. That means that a fraction of the money spent on every Switch could be going to some pretty bad people. Yeah, that's not fun to think about, but Nintendo's corporate culture really is that secretive. They're so anti-transparency that they won't even dispel the rumor that the Switch production involves people who violate human rights. Nintendo wanting to control every element of the conversation about the Switch Pro is perfectly in line with the company's history. It's also worth noting that Nintendo has a history of giving a short notice for enhanced versions of their consoles. 
The Nintendo Direct for the new Nintendo 3DS aired only a month before the console premiered in 2015. This is a really abrupt window to get people excited about the enhanced system. However, this marketing strategy worked out for Nintendo in the end. While the numbers are a bit fuzzy, Nintendo sold an average of about 7 million each year from 2015 to 2018. It's fair to assume that around half of those numbers were the new Nintendo 3DS, meaning that it successfully extended the life of the 3DS family. Hell, you could even argue that Nintendo's silence about the Switch Pro is a part of a marketing campaign already in motion. After all, we're talking about it right now, as are a lot of other outlets and countless forums. Once Nintendo provides a date for the next Nintendo Direct, people are also sure to speculate if they'll announce the Switch Pro in that video. People are doing the Switch Pro's marketing campaign for Nintendo right now. Gamers are already making up their minds if they're going to buy one or not, and now Nintendo just needs to confirm the system's features. It's a really good marketing strategy, and lines up perfectly with the mindsets of Nintendo's veteran staff and the new blood running the company. Why Nintendo would make a Switch Pro Nintendo's leadership is actually pretty motivated to make an enhanced version of the Nintendo Switch. Of course, they want to make a whole bunch of money, but that isn't the sole reason. Nintendo wouldn't actually make a ton of money from Switch Pro sales alone. A lot more money goes into designing, manufacturing, and transporting a video game console than the video games it can play. Most of the time, console manufacturers are doing just a little bit better than breaking even every time someone buys a piece of gaming hardware. Instead, gaming companies make the bulk of their money from their cut of the gaming software that's sold on their system. So Nintendo doesn't necessarily want to sell a bunch of Switch Pros. They just want as many people as possible to have a system that plays Switch games. It would make sense, then, that Nintendo would release a more powerful Switch at this moment in time. With the release of the Switch Lite in 2019, both casual and intermediate gamers are serviced by the Switch family. The only demographic left is more hardcore gamers that really value the power and graphics fidelity of a console. The Switch Pro is custom-built to appeal to them. Even ride-or-die PC bros might be willing to pick up a Switch Pro if it means they can finally play Nintendo games at decent graphics settings. The creative team at Nintendo also stands to directly benefit from the release of the Switch Pro. A more powerful system means that they can develop more involved games and fully realize the scope they had in mind for more intense titles. Let's be real for a second, the Switch is amazing, but it could just barely run Breath of the Wild at its biggest moments. You can also feel how much more the development team wanted to put into that game. But we're unable to because of the limits of the Nintendo Switch and the Wii U. <coughs> The more business-minded folks in Nintendo also stand to benefit from the release of the Switch Pro. Nintendo's new CEO, Shuntaro Furukawa, has to realize the partnership opportunities that an enhanced Switch entails. A more powerful version of the Switch means that more current-gen games can be ported to that system. The more games that are on the system, the more likely people are to buy games on the Switch. And more games being sold on the Switch means that Nintendo gets to pocket even more coins, rupees, bells, or whatever currency exists in the Metroid universe. Huh. Money in Metroid is called Siguru. Neat. Anyway, the point stands that everyone at Nintendo stands to benefit if the Switch Pro matches the leaks we've seen so far. Or if Nintendo decides to push the envelope even further, what if these leaks are a fake-out? Okay, so this last section of the video might sound a little muffled through our tinfoiled hats, but we swear that there's a point to it. What if all these leaks are some kind of fake-out, and the Switch Pro's actually a whole lot closer to a traditional console? Seriously, it would make sense considering who this console is geared towards and what Nintendo is trying to accomplish with it. If the Switch Pro is made for people who want to play Nintendo games at high-end settings, then they won't really mind if it isn't portable. For this demographic, the more Nintendo can soup up the system, the better. Without the portability constraints, Nintendo could also choose to add an optical drive along with a chip reader. Being able to read discs along with the Switch's fairly standard control scheme means that it would be super easy to develop for the Switch Pro. Third-party companies could bring their games to the Switch Pro without having to put a significant amount of resources into optimizing it for the platform. Retaining the chip reader also means that games developed by Nintendo and its affiliates could still work on every version of the Switch. Not to mention that it would be a pretty baller move if Nintendo released a high-end console after more than a decade of doing its own thing. It would be astonishing if Nintendo came out of left field and beat Microsoft and Sony at their own game. Is it likely to happen? No, but now that Nintendo has a virtual monopoly on the portable market, it's only a matter of time before they start moving in other territories. This upcoming console generation seems like the perfect time to do so as well. Both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X just kind of feel like more of the same. 
Neither are really experimenting or expanding in ways that previous consoles did. In fact, the Xbox Series X is so poorly branded that its name is a literal tongue twister. Go ahead, try and say Xbox Series X three times fast. You can do it. Listen. <clears throat> Xbox Series X, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series X. <laughs> huh. What are you doing, Microsoft? It feels like both Sony and Microsoft have been coasting in the console market for a while now. Since Stadia is more or less a flop, that means Nintendo is the only company that can really liven things up again. It's obvious, though, that Nintendo is set to shake up the gaming landscape with the release of the Switch Pro. Even if we have a general idea of what that system will entail, the House of Mario is sure to throw in a few surprises as well. Like updating the number of retro games available on the system, or finally setting up some decent online multiplayer. Sure, that might be a low bar, but with Nintendo, you never really know what you're gonna get. Well, except for some of the most fun and joy-inducing games in the history of the medium, they're pretty good at making those. Well, what do you think is in store for us with a Nintendo Switch Pro? Are you ready to have your mind blown, or do you have lower expectations? Please let us know in the comments section down below. And while you're there, be sure to like this video, subscribe to The Gamer for more, and ring that bell. Doing all three really helps the channel and lets us bring even more insider gaming content right to your eyeballs. See you next time.